expert news and views on the low country real estate scene. The Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on 1250 WTMA. Welcome back, Charleston. As the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show continues here on the Big Talker, 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. So let's get into this. Let's talk about the real estate market. Let's go through some numbers and help you guys better understand the direction uh, of the market. And, you know, forewarning, it's it's not great. You know, it's the, the numbers don't look very good. But it depends on who you're asking, and it depends on what you're trying to accomplish, right? If you're a seller, uh, the you know, you don't have pocket aces anymore, right? If this is a poker <laughs> match, um, you know, you, you, you have to get back to some of the basics here. You know, we have to talk about what are we going to do to prep the home for sale? What should we do? What should we not do? What makes sense? What's a good use of our time? What's a good use of our money and resources versus what are the things that agents typically tell somebody to create some busy work to make that agent seem and look important and knowledgeable when in reality, all you're doing is spinning your wheels because what they're telling you to do doesn't really matter and has no impact on your sale. Classic example of that, just as a no, by the way, is, uh, well, you got to take down all family photos, right? You've got to remove any of your personal touches. Uh, I, just, I, just, I just think it's ridiculous. I mean, it's stupid. Let's be honest. If you have a shrine in <laughs> your family room, to uh, somebody or your family, well, then, you know, if it takes up an entire wall and it's clearly a focal point, then yes, that makes sense to edit and and uh, relocate. But uh, family photos here and there, give me a break, right? So let's talk about what's going on in this market. And if, and if by the way, if, if you want to understand what your home is worth right now, if you want to understand how much purchasing power you have right now, uh, feel free to give me a call and I'll walk you through how we how we do that, especially in some of these different markets in Charleston. We, we've got some markets that are still very hot. We have some markets that are very slow right now in comparison to earlier in the year. So it's like the switch flipped off for some folks and they're probably not aware of that. So if you'd like That information, if you'd like a discussion on what your particular home in your area and your price range is worth, what it would sell for, uh, please give me a call, 843-800-0065. Call or text that number, 843-800-0065 or listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. So, you know, when we've got a market where affordability continues to be a huge obstacle for buyers and sellers, right? It's not just a buyer problem. It's a seller problem too, because who are they selling their home to? A buyer. Where are they going to go? Are they renting or are they going to buy something else? Well, they're a seller and a buyer. So it affects all of us really. But you, you've got interest rates that are sky high right now. It's not as high as, you know, it's not like the highest they've ever been, right? We've seen interest rates that have been higher than this. But what it's doing is it's just crushing affordability. And as a result, we're seeing pending sales and closings go way down. So pending sales are just homes that are under contract, right? They're getting ready to close. Year to date, we've had a little under 17,000 of them compared to 21,000 year to date 2021. So that's down about 19%. But if you look at, uh, let me get to this screen really quickly. If you look at pending sales, uh, the the change month over month is drastic, right? In October of 2020, we put a little over 2,000 homes under contract. October last year, a little over 1,900, right? Not quite as good, but still pretty awesome. This month, or I'm sorry, last month, under 1,300, down 33%. And every month... When, when I follow what number of homes are going under contract, it just goes down and down and down and down and down and down and down. It's just a reflection of demand. I mean, congratulations. They set out what they wanted to do when they decided to continuously uh, hike up rates, and that's destroy demand. And so what has happened is people are a little hesitant to put their home on the market right now. They don't really 
feel great about getting out of a 3% mortgage into a 7% or 7.5% mortgage. There's still some stuff out there in the sixes, but sparse. Uh, And of course, that changes uh, daily, multiple times a day, the interest rates. But we're just in a little bit of a gridlock right now. There are still people that need to sell. And there are people that need to buy. And those transactions will occur. It's not like we're going to completely stop here, right? The the train is just going a lot slower. But slower in comparison to what? You know, we were driving 100 miles an hour down the highway for a few years with regard to appreciation. That is not normal. If we're comparing what's going on right now to that, then, you know, we've, we need to change our expectations, right? It is not normal for properties to go up 15%, 18%, 20 plus percent a year in value. You can't have that happen for very long. Otherwise, no one's going to be able to afford the home unless wages are increasing consistent with that. Even year to date, median sales price is up 15% in the Tri-County area. In Charleston County, the median sales price is up 15%. In Dorchester County, it's up 18%. And Berkeley County, it's up 16.5%. You know, Berkeley County is at uh, 387 as a median sales price. Dorchester, 365. Charleston County, 575. Uh, highest I've, frankly, ever seen. Well, it's the highest I've ever seen it. Um, but what's happening with affordability? Let's. I, I want to get to that because that's the, the name of the game right now. So first of all, what is affordability? How do we measure it? What what are these numbers that I'm about to tell you mean? So when we talk about housing affordability and the housing affordability index, it's an index that measures the affordability for a specific area. So as an example, if I were to say that the housing affordability index was 101, 101%, which is what it was October of 2021, an index of 101, 101, means the median household income is 101% of what is necessary to qualify for the median priced home in that area. In other words, the higher the number, the more affordable real estate is. We have dipped below 100 as of December 2021, and we have not gone back up above it, meaning for nearly a year, homes have, generally speaking, been unaffordable. But now, they're getting pretty darn unaffordable for a lot of people. Last month's number was 64. And if you compare that to what's going on right now, it's going to be probably even worse. So 64, meaning as an area, the median income is only 64% of what is necessary to qualify for a median priced home. Not good. That that, uh, number, that index, by the way, is down about 37%. It's been going down for, you know, quite a while now, but... Gone are the days where it makes sense financially to just go and buy something bigger and better because, you know, hey, if you're at a four and a half percent interest rate and you go and you buy something else for, you know, one hundred and fifty, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars more and you get an interest rate at two and a half percent and the payment doesn't changes, then big whoop. All you needed was the equity, right? All you needed was the difference in the down payment, which a lot of people had from their homes because homes have been appreciating in value since like 2013. So now that that's come to a halt and there is no longer a, quote, financial incentive for people to move or financial justification for for people to move, move upward, I should say. We have a lot of those folks that are saying, yeah, you know, I would buy a house and, and, and I'd sell it if the right thing came along, but I'm not in a rush and, you know, I'm just going to, you know, if, if the right thing hit the market or if you could find the perfect home, yeah, I'd, I'd really consider it. There's a ton of people out there like that. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with that um, because you're telling the truth, right? There's nothing pushing you out the door that's causing you to sell the house. Now, it might be causing you some physical discomfort. Maybe you have a master bedroom on the second floor and 
You're, you're getting up there in age. It's just not something you want to deal with anymore. Maybe your yard is larger than you have time to care for. Maybe there's more square footage than you need. Maybe you need more square footage. There are plenty of legitimate reasons, of course, to move. But the people that are moving just for the sake of being opportunistic about it, I think they're just sitting on the sidelines right now. What's going to happen, though, and what's interesting to follow in this market, and this is part of the, you know, what will happen next phase of this discussion, you're going to see more listings at the market. We're absolutely going to see more listings at the market. And I think that um, toward the end of the first quarter next year, you're going to see quite a few homes hit the market. Not a lot happens between frankly, now and say January, February, we don't usually see major shifts in the market. It's just, you know, the market is in line with what we would expect based on the seasonality of the market, which is that demand's a little lower, supply's a little lower. Um, It's the typical bell curve where the top of the bell curve is, you know, the spring and summer months, just a slower time of year. What a lot of people do though, to take advantage of that is they beat people to the punch they list their home before the wave of people list their home in February and March and April. And the people that are out there that are looking that are ready, willing and able to buy, if the right thing hits the market, well, guess what? You, you, you get them before you start competing for buyers with a bunch of other sellers. We're seeing the number of active listings in areas that we're running comps in increase pretty drastically. It used to, you know, again, it used to be for the past few years that if we would look at something for sale or determine what we should sell something for in a particular neighborhood and we were like, right, well, what's, what's for sale right now? What is your competition doing? There was hardly anything for sale, right? That section of comparable properties to derive value from was just kind of missing and very sparse. Now you're starting to see three, four, five, ten plus homes in that area, in that price range, in that neighborhood that you can then realistically say, all right, well, it's pretty obvious that this home's overpriced because they've been on the market for 75 days. They haven't adjusted their price. Um, And even though the market is slower right now, you should still anticipate a sale in about 30 days. I mean, the average days on market as of last month was 26. So that's not bad. Anyways, that's what's going on in the market right now. Demand is uh, continuing to uh, decline. Supply is going up, but um, the number of homes for sale isn't necessarily what's fueling that increase. It's the lack of sales that's fueling that increase. The month's supply of inventory, which is the statistic we use to kind of measure the health of a real estate market, month's supply of inventory is up 60% or 58.3 if you want to be technical about it, but that's what's happening in the market. So if you're a seller, I want you to understand that the way in which you react to people that are in sales has changed over the years. Consumer behavior is different. The way that they react and respond to marketing is different. Yet for some reason, most real estate agents have not changed the way they do business. They've not changed their processes, their sales skills. It's same old, same old, taught by the same old sales gurus, written by folks that you know were popular back in the 90s or in 80s and even before that. And it's just not going to work very well for today's buyer in this new economy. So I want to walk you through what most people do, why people kind of behave and react the way they do, and then how you as a seller... I think need to choose an agent that really understands that process. So stick around. This is the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. Remember, if you want to reach out to me, have a discussion about your home, your situation, how I can help, the number is 843-800-0065, 843-800-0065, or check us out online, Listings in Charleston. Dot com. We'll be right back. Hear the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show every Saturday morning at 9 and each Sunday morning at 10 on 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com.